Hello and welcome to In the Envelope, an awards podcast from Backstage. I am your host, Jack Smart, awards editor at Backstage, and I'm here to give you a front row seat to the industry's most exciting awards races. Who is in the running? How can you, listener, win a statue of your own? What makes awards-worthy film, television, and theater? We're sitting down with some very talented actors to get that insider's perspective on these questions and more, and maybe, just maybe, we'll get a tantalizing glimpse in the envelope. It's really hard. I mean, it's getting enough sleep, getting at least eight to ten hours of sleep, drinking at least a gallon or three a day, sure. um, warming up and warming down, mm. Um, mm. making sure whatever you put in your body is good for your body. Lots of greens and ginger and turmeric and always at a voice therapist or always at a voice gotcha. lesson or mm-hmm. seeing your ENT if you feel the tickle something wrong, especially mm. since our musical everything's so heightened. Uh, we're singing 90 minutes straight. And I'm Stephen Flaherty. Which means I write. Yeah, and he's a composer. I know who you are. Okay, here's the thing, listeners. Yes, I was just listening to a video where Lynn Ahrens and Stephen Flaherty say their names correctly because I need to be able to say their names correctly. I'm a huge fan of both of them. But you know what? You become a podcast host and you find out that you don't actually know how to say the words out loud, or maybe you just haven't had enough conversations with other musical theater geeks about Lynn Ahrens and Stephen Flaherty. There we go. All right, we're good. So (laughs) Lynn Ahrens and Stephen Flaherty, listeners, are the composer-lyricist duo behind Once on This Island, the first Broadway revival of which is currently playing at Circle in the Square Theater in this really beautiful ravishing, innovative production by directed by Michael Arden. And um, today's guest is Alex Newell, who steals the show as Asaka. Asaka is the Haitian-inspired goddess of the earth in this musical, uh, whose big number, Mama Will Provide, it just brings the house down. People are on their feet every night for Alex, who can sing like a soprano and who belts his face off. It's extraordinary. Other things that people need to know about the show, because I know that this is the Tony's mini season of this podcast. We're talking about theater. We're talking about Broadway, which is based specifically in New York. For those of you who are not based in New York or who have not seen ones on this island, keep an eye out for the tour. But in the meantime, what you need to know about this production is that, first of all, it's great. And second of all, the aesthetic of this show is it takes place on a set where the stage is full of sand. The entire cast is on stage for most of the show. They're gallivanting around. They're singing all of the parts because it's a very small orchestra. There's a goat. There's a goat that's a scene partner. The aesthetic is very much like repurposed trash, trash that becomes beauty and symbolic. There's a lot of symbolism in this musical. And so this very innovative production kind of uses that to great effect. And Alex, although he was not actually nominated for a Tony Award, this interview did take place before the Tony nominations came out. It's no big deal because he's still very much a member of the Broadway community and he's still absolutely one of the biggest and best stars of this Broadway season. He had a lot of wonderful advice to give, especially when it comes to taking care of your voice. And if you've ever wondered about how to simply survive eight shows a week on Broadway, let alone eight shows of singing your face off in a challenging musical. Um, This is very much the the interview for you. And Alex is very young. He got his start at an even younger age with a video audition uploaded to MySpace for Glee. It was for the Glee Project, which was this reality show that was uh, the winner of which was going to get a recurring role on Glee. Alex was actually runner-up on the show, and he still got the recurring role on Glee. He played Wade Unique Adams, one of the first female trans characters on television in Ryan Murphy's show on Fox, a show that was pretty much a game changer and was certainly a game changer for Alex, who also signed a recording contract. He is a pop star. I listen to his dance music all the time. And he really has it in perspective in terms of becoming an emerging pop star, an emerging LGBTQ icon and activist, and now a Broadway star. This is a great interview. I make a lot of fun, funny, weird noises in this interview because I had a lot of fun interviewing Alex. We speak a lot of the same language. I hope you speak that language too. But even if you don't, it's going to be a great interview. All right, we got to get to it. Let's take a quick break and then welcome to the podcast, Alex Newell. (laughs) 
Alex Newell stops the show as the goddess Asaka in the Tony-nominated Broadway revival of Once on This Island. He got his start at a very young age with a video audition for The Glee Project, winding up with both a recording contract and a recurring role on Ryan Murphy's Glee as Wade Unique Adams, one of the first trans characters on network TV. Despite being ridiculously young for such success, he is also wise beyond his years. Here it is, our interview with the one and only Alex Newell. I don't know how much I'm going to shake it up because you're um, musical theater rather than these like TV or film people. Oh, those people that used to be one of those, then I decided to come to the Great yes, White indeed. Way. Yes, indeed. Did you always want to come to the Great White Way? Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure. Do you remember, like, what was the inspiration or why did you, what was your first, like, being exposed to Broadway? I've always been exposed to the Broadway. Um, I think I just wanted to do it randomly when I was, like, four. Uh-huh. And so I got my equity card when I was, like, 17, so... Oh, so it's basically like the equivalent gotcha. of a SAG card. And I got that at like 17. How did you get equity card? Um, I was doing a musical in mm-hmm. St. Louis. I was doing Joseph at the Muni. Oh, cool. And then I backed out a week before rehearsals because I had to go film Glee. Ah! But it's whatever. They still got <laughs> me my card. And you got SAG after card from, from Glee. Yeah. That's so crazy. Mm-hmm. I backstage, as you know, it's all about the working actor. It's all about the early career actor. And... We ask for a lot of advice, especially in regards to like auditioning mm-hmm. and including self tapes. Uh-huh. And you have the ultimate self tape. I do big break story. <laughs> yeah, that I do. Somehow, that one random self tape ended up being for on TV for what six years. Yeah. Wow. On a huge TV show. Yeah, a little television show. No, just a tiny little television show. That no one watched it. Changed nothing. Yeah. <laughs> No, like, trans representation. No one watched it. Yeah. Um, was it true that that was uploaded to MySpace? Yeah. What? Decades ago, before, like, Facebook was, like, a it's real thing. decades. It was. It it was <laughs> decades ago in my book. Facebook was, like, a long, long, long journey. Yeah. MySpace was so much closer. Um, but no, it was, like, MySpace, Facebook was just starting to be a thing. I still had, like, 16 MySpace accounts, as everyone did. Oh, uh-huh. And, yeah. Hmm. So you could spy on your friends. I was going to say, what did you use your, your to MySpace To spy on your for? friends. Like but, like, also to. to show off your music and your What music? I, th- I had no stuff? music. No. I didn't have anything back then. Did I was, you list your favorite music? I don't think I just used it the way that you're supposed you to use it. People. I think I just, like, used it. Because MySpace is, like, a different... Now I know it's music, and it's very heavy music-oriented. Uh, but back then, it was just, like, a profile uh-huh. where you could change your wallpaper paper and everybody thought they were doing like um coding and stuff <laughs> right 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 i'm a web designer exactly totally where you go to a website to get like the template of the website and then you cut and paste it was just a lot yeah and you thought you were coding yeah you're like i'm an entrepreneur yeah that's a lie i don't even know what that means right although in your case you kind of were because you <laughs> uploaded this video and a ton of people saw it yeah yeah including ryan murphy i guess i guess little baby what is it like to work with ryan murphy ryan murphy's everything and on your first project i mean to this day, Ryan Murphy looks at me and says, as I live and breathe. And I'm just like, hey, Ryan, what's up? As I live and breathe. As I live and breathe. Every time I see him, he's like, as I live and breathe. I saw him at, like, I was having coffee at Alfred's in L.A., um, which is the best coffee place ever, BT Dubs. Um, nice plug. That was a good you're plug. You're welcome. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was me and my best friend, Clark. We had just wrapped up, and then all of a sudden, I see a range whip pie and then him run down the corner and then sees me takes off his sunglasses <laughs> and says it as i live and breathe miss oh alex how are you and i'm like wow ryan you're grand right now and it's <laughs> seven in the morning <laughs> was that the moment you knew you had like made it i mean i think the moment that i knew that i made it was when deborah messing um oh primped my hair and blotted my face that is how you know you've made when it when did that happen this happened at the trailblazer awards over the past summer and i was just like clearly i'm here i've arrived and the spotlight is on me <laughs> deborah missing knows who you are yep. is touching you yep. is blotting my face of <laughs> you free of oil that she was making me free of oil that's um that's gay rights yeah, right yeah. there that is that's lgbt i mean q b c i there's so many q i a to uh lgbt q q i a p p there yeah, it is. Found totally. it. There it is. Yep, I have to say it really fast. And she's the queen. She is. She's one of the queens. She's, in my book, the queen right now. Have you, 
I don't know. Beyonce is about to do Coachella again. So, <sighs> yeah, well, which I can't believe. I can't even wait. I, can't, I think she's gone I from Queen that. to Goddess. So it's now Goddess B yeah. instead of Queen B. It's Goddess B. Who said like Coachella was the opportunity for her to be like, oh, now it's now it's what I'm going to do the um, greatest concert well, of my life. Well, the thing is, what else can she do? She's done the <laughs> Super Bowl twice now yes. where she's done it herself and then snatched someone else's yes. career out of their hand. Yeah. Um, and I love Coldplay. Sure. <laughs> I love Coldplay, but like no one remembered that it was Coldplay's yep. Super Time, Super Super Time, Super Bowl ah! halftime performance. <laughs> um, we just remembered Beyonce and her little man Bruno Mars her come man, out. Her little sidekick. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, I'm just. I, there's nothing else she can, unless she like gives a concert in Central Park while it's raining, like Diana yeah, Ross. Like how do you keep going? Yeah. Like there's up only up up so up. much that you can do unless you mm-hmm. like do a. NBC Live of just Beyonce, which I mean, I'm giving her ideas, but well, yeah, I mean, just the amount of the sheer amount of people who watched illegally. I don't know if it was legal. It was legal. The, um, oh, okay. I mean, someone... now it's illegal because it's just on YouTube. Right, 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 right. But I, I thought the same thing. NBC or or whatever it needs to be like. We need to just air. Her. I think that's like kind of what they're trying to do with J Lo and Bye Bye Birdie. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. We just had Brandon Victor Dixon on the podcast, who is Judas in um, Jesus Christ Superstar. Do you did you watch Jesus Christ Superstar? I did. Oh, okay. He, I did. I did. I did. I yeah, watched yeah. it in second. I mean, I just saw Mean Girls last night. Well, Wednesday night or oh, whatever. Cute. Yeah. And I didn't know how many friends I had in the musical until they were all in front of me. Oh. The same happened while I was watching Jesus Christ Superstar. I was yes. like, Oh my! You're and you're uh, and you. Uh, I'm clearly <laughs> off the social media game. Congratulations, <laughs> y'all. But that's crazy considering you've been a part of the Broadway community since the fall. I mean, eh, I wouldn't say the fall. It, it speaks worse to me. I've been a part of the Broadway community for like ever. In terms of like being a fan. Yeah, but between being a fan, yeah, I mean like yeah. I've never been on Broadway, but like I was a bro- I was like the Kardashian of Broadway. Oh. I was just in these streets doing all the galas and all the things. I was just kind yes. of there without like really having the clout to be there. <laughs> You absolutely have the cut. No, 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 no. I mean, like, I was going to the Tony party at the plaza every year, just twirling around, looking, looking like I was fabulous, looking like a million bucks, nines and tens, going to see everybody's Broadway show, like, yeah. going backstage, talking to them. Yes. Like, I was the card. I was a socialite of Broadway without ever having touched a stage. That's amazing. And, and social media is part of that, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean... That's cool. Glee was basically Broadway on steroids. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it, there's a lot of overlap between the Glee audience and the... The Broadway fanatics, yeah, for sure. Those things, and we all know, we all knew who you were the yeah. moment you walked out onto the. I mean, the moment Glee Project happened. Oh was God, when it was like that's when that's when I became Kim Kardashian West. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, from Kim K to just Kim Kardashian, to just West. Kim Kardashian West. Yes, and now you're approaching. I would say, I don't know. I don't, <laughs> I don't know, know what it's called. What the analogy is? Yeah, you know, work. <laughs> Destiny's Child. Oh God, Michelle yeah. Williams. At least Michelle Kelly Williams. Williams. <laughs> At least. I hope that they're listening to this podcast. I actually do. Michelle, you know I love you, girl. Yeah, Michelle Williams. Yeah. We just got engaged. Hashtag, really. I was so, I cried a little bit. A little tear fell. <laughs> I, I was like, her. oh my God, you're so sweet. I met her once and she was just very effervescent and very kind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How many other people, I saw, I saw a couple of the people you've met recently because of Once on This Island. Ah, there was the the Broadway folks. There's Neil Patrick Harris and there's... Yes. And but David. you saw Jill Scott recently. Oh, yes. Yeah, she came to the musical. Ugh. We call it the musical. <laughs> the We're musical. in a musical and we call it the musical. I love it. Like, we'll text each other, hey, are you in the musical tonight or not? <laughs> okay. Will you be doing the musical? Um, <laughs> but she came to the musical. Yes. I asked her to play Osaka. She said no. Oh, how um, funny. <laughs> I'm going to text her as soon as I leave here and I'm going to tell her. You have her phone number? I don't want to say that out loud. I don't want to confirm. I plead the fifth. No, no, me no, and like, Scandal. Like, say the phone number out loud. Absolutely not. That's how I die. <laughs> um, but I'm going to like... She's all I listen to. Dear Jill, please come and do the musical um, and play Osaka when I leave. <laughs> thanking you. Um, that could actually happen. I pray. Um, but she's come. Um, Chris Colfer's coming tonight. Oh, cute. Um, Billy Porter's coming back again tonight. Uh-huh. Um, he texted me this morning saying, please say you're in the musical. And I was just like, oh, God. He calls it the musical, too. Yeah, I think it's just, we all call it the musical. (laughs) I don't know why it's called, it's just very proper. I mean, when you walk into the theater, it's so informal. Oh, yeah. It's just so informal. There's garbage everywhere. There's clothes. There's a goat. There's a chicken. There's sand. It's a garbage aesthetic. There's water. There's a dilapidated power pole. It's the musical. We want some. Totally. Just some pull back to that. It's a Broadway show you're seeing. (laughs) Totally. I mean, I'm over there cooking with this woman. I was cooking one day during yeah. my pre-show, and this woman literally was just like, oh, what is this? And I said, please don't. An audience member. Yes, oh, like just touched all the spices. I was like, please don't. Uh, uh, uh. 
stop yeah. this. Did you have to say that? Did you have to say I it did, but I, it, it took me fully out of the character. Oh. <laughs> and it was just Alex speaking. I was just like, ah, ble- ah stop it. <laughs> gotcha. Well, for those who have not seen or who have yet to see the musical, could you kind of give like, yeah, explain the the maybe the angle of the show or the There's aesthetic? There's no angle. There's no I'm angle. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> like it's in the costume design. It's in your costume design, especially the. I think the biggest angle out of our show is beauty out of chaos. Mm-hmm. I think there's so much, cool. di- especially with my costume and my character. Mm-hmm. It's the unconventional costume pieces that are then made into something that is divinity, that is divine, yeah, that is held cool. up to this higher stature than it just being a tablecloth. Mm-hmm. This is the god. Uh, the mother of the earth, the god, wearing this gorgeous floral printed gown. Mm-hmm. And so that's what they made. They heightened it. It's 40 yards of fabric. It's weighted. It's wow. it's couture. Um, mm-hmm. A giant headdress that comes out uh, that's made out of um, just shower curtain and stuff. Uh-huh. It's those kind of things. Or you see Leia Salonga's costume, the god of um, the what, goddess of love, mm-hmm. who's wearing mosquito netting, a um, and that tubing. ethernet. Ethernets yeah, yeah, yeah. on top of her head with broken glass yeah. and a stethoscope around her waist as the bodice. Right. Um, and you have so cool. um, the Agwe, currently Q, Quentin Nail Durrington, who's wearing silks and garbage bags yeah, as yeah. Agwe. And it's just, that's what it is. It's trying to make something that's not anything, something revealed mm. and reveled in mm-hmm. and loved and seen as this is what it is. I think it's when I go back to chaos and beauty being one together, I mean, I that's truly what this show is when you walk totally. into the theater. That's there in the material, too. Yeah. And this is channeling it so wonderfully. You, you must have known the show before any of this, before getting involved. Absolutely. And, yeah. um, I did the show in 2009. I did an all-white version of Once on this Island. I hold it high up there, and Are I played you, Papa Gay. Serious? Yeah, I was the only white in the musical. No, I was the only black in the musical. Um, Wait, why? <laughs> Was this, wait, 2009, so you were... You, I don't know how when? old I was. I stopped counting. Wait, but why was it all white? Um, It was in the Massachusetts, Ch- where I'm from. Oh, okay. So it was community theater. <laughs> yes. I won't call it theater. Community theater. Sure. Um, And... Wow. <laughs> yeah. It, instead of they despise us for our blackness, they were like, they despise us for our richness. And I was just like, I'm uh, sorry, they despise us for our poorness. And I was just like... Oh... Oh, they equated the two. Cool, yeah, cool, cool, there's cool, like cool. a whole like junior version <laughs> that like they use. Oh, right, right, right. Where they can't like use race and class and stuff like that. But I was just like, this mm. doesn't make sense to me since I I'm the only African American in the 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 um the piece. Yeah, which must have been like a weird responsibility almost. No, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> you weren't like the leader of the. Absolutely not. You weren't turned to of like. So what's Haitian culture about? No, 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 no. Okay. <laughs> no, 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 none of that. That's I good. was like, I'm just You're here to kid. express. I think it was like I was. Yeah. I had to have been like. A freshman in high school. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, yeah. like, my brain truly wasn't fully de- developed or anything sure. like that yet. Amazing. So, you did know the show, yeah. but this, but Michael Arden's kind of vision for this production, you described it so beautifully. Like, that does channel everything that these writers have created in this yeah. mythology. Uh-huh. And it works, wh- it really works in that informal, very casual. It is. Um, the pre show is my favorite part. It's so cool. It, it's. You never uh, see that. We're very lackadaisy about it, but it is because it's. We don't, Southern Square is so small. We don't have a green room. We don't have anywhere where we can like check in with each other. Mm -hmm. And so what Michael really wanted, he wanted a time for us to be like, hey, what's up? How you doing? How you feeling? Mm -hmm. And based, I did the show two weeks ago with all of bronchitis and everyone could tell that I had the bronchitis Uh. because normally I'm running around the stage screaming and yelling. Yeah. This, that week I was literally just sitting down at my little station, cooking my little food, Mm -hmm. sipping my water, just trying to breathe. But I mean, gosh, you always, it's, I always find it, it's nice to be able to check in with your cast, especially since Mm -hmm. it's such an ensemble piece and Mm -hmm. each one of us, when one person's not there, we all feel it. Mm. Um, and when family. one person's off, we all feel it. Um, and we rely on each other a lot. Mm-hmm. Like everyone has a different job that they have to do, mm-hmm. and you forget that until that person's not there. And mm. I, it's always lovely to get to check in before you're just like, oh my god, I did, can, you're here. I yeah. didn't know you were here until we got three songs into the musical. Right, 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 right. right. It is such an ensemble piece. Yeah, it's it's beautiful, and I can't. 
I can't wait to hear about how you take care of your voice. You mentioned bronchitis <laughs> in the elevator ride up here. You were saying that you had you were attached to three IVs only yesterday. I, only yesterday <laughs> morning, three IVs, all the antibiotics and a steroid. Um, it's hard. How do you do it? I don't know. Um, I'm also just also with the anxiety of Broadway is just hard. It is. Yeah, um, totally. I find asking about the how people just straight up survive the just that uh, the stamina is. It's... I think that's just the. I mean, I did 113 shows without ever calling out. Uh huh. From the beginning of there previews up until my understudy's birthday, and I said, "Here, please have your birthday. Oh, take it, cool. run with it." Oh, wonderful! Like I need a break, and so yeah. from that moment on, it's just like my body is just like, "Ha ha, gotcha!" Uh huh. And so I've been fighting through a lot, but I think that hmm. being on Broadway, that's half the battle. It's not just performing; it's how to keep yourself well yeah. and sane mm -hmm. and on top of your game. Um, there's a lot of anxiety that comes with it. Sure. Um, especially around the time of Tony seasons and all the awards that had come arise. Yes. Um, and then life itself is on top of it. I mean, I had bronchitis. I had to do the show. I had, my mother had just suffered from a stroke. I'm an only child. Oh, I'm so it's Tony season. So my life was really just like crumbling on top of itself. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, I still have to be on stage and yep. give the performance that the, the nice little poster of me says that brings down, uh, I gotta go do that. Uh, <coughs> Excuse there's me. that pressure, yeah. But like, that's where all the anxiety starts to come down. And then yeah. they're like, you have to do this press and that press. I mean, the day, of course. it's, that's, it's the job and it's the gig, but it's mm -hmm. more so of you never really know how temperamental your body is to life situations oh, yeah. until they're literally <laughs> in one alley and one lane. And you're just like, oh, wait, so you all rely on each other for me to do my job? Right, I'm right, also right. just not sleeping because of all the anxiety. So I need to go see my doctor about a nice little pill of Ambien or something. Yeah. But that's just a side note. <laughs> Um, but no, it's, it's really hard. I mean, it's getting enough sleep, getting at least eight to 10 hours of sleep, drinking at least a gallon or three a day, sure. um, warming up and warming down, mm. um, mm. making sure whatever you put in your body is good for your body. Lots of greens and, um, yep. ginger and turmeric and vo always at a voice therapist or always at a voice gotcha. lesson or mm -hmm. seeing your ENT if you feel the tickle something wrong um especially mm. since our musical everything's so heightened um we're singing 90 minutes straight yeah i went to go see mean girls and i was just like oh my god these guys have so easy they get to leave the stage to, yeah absolutely you get to leave baby you get to leave the stage <laughs> not to just make a costume change but you get to go leave <laughs> and sit down drink your water meanwhile i'm like can i have a bucket of water just on my table on so that i can <laughs> douse that down and, totally. the and not to take away from the work that they're doing they're doing amazing work oh, but sure. we're Yes, we all joke our, our 90-minute musical. It is 90 minutes. By the time I'm in, I'm Girl. out. But baby, we are working totally. from the very minute you walk into the theater mm -hmm. up until the minute that we walk off stage. Yeah. So it's just, it's all of those things that really you have to think about and keep in motion. I mean, that 90-minute show I'm singing, I'm playing the trumpet. I'm not playing the trumpet, but I'm singing uh -huh. the trumpet line yep. because I don't, the music of our show is so wonderful. Totally. Um, we, I think there was like 17 pieces in the original company of this musical. Uh -huh. We only have four pieces. Gotcha. We have uh, ooh, keyboard, guitar, bass, and percussion. That's yeah, it. yeah, yeah. Which puts even more focus on the ensemble. I yeah, think. because we have to sing up and make that giant wall of sound mm -hmm, mm -hmm. throughout the entire musical. And in we're all always doing it in sand. Yeah, that's wild too. So Let's get everywhere. <laughs> it's everywhere. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've just been a tickle in my throat. I'm just like, oh, that's sand. A, ah! pearl, a pearl or a diamond is going to fall out of me one day. So <laughs> it's... It's amazing. It's a lot. But like all of those singing the trumpet line in the sand while trying to just keep yourself healthy is just... Mm. It's hard. Yeah. And I don't even like thinking about it sometimes. Sure, sure, sure. You don't want to get too in your head about it. No, I mean, it's hard not to, but I mean, it's there. Yeah. Totally. You must be so in touch with your body because like you're saying, it's just sheer survival. In it's a survival way. mode. Survival of the fittest. It's the Olympics. Yeah. And I am. I mean, I was at my voice lesson before I got here today because I had the strep this yesterday and this morning, apparently. I don't know if my doctor's correct, mm -hmm. but I'm not a doctor. But it's you have to have all your ducks in a row yeah. before things go wrong. You have to know, mm -hmm. like, 
it's great to have your ducks in a row after wrong. the fact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you want to be like, hey, I'm having this problem today. Can I come in now? Yeah, come on in. Or I've been taking this, 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 and this. Rather what than, can be... I take this, 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 mm-hmm. and this? It's like always better to ask mm-hmm. for forgiveness than permission, honestly. Love it. Just totally. have it there ready. That's excellent advice. Yeah. Because, I mean, backstage, people who've never been on Broadway don't understand, especially for a musical, especially for 90 minutes of full-on singing and being on stage all the time, the, the sheer endurance that it takes. Yeah. And but, you, but this is your first time doing it. It is. I've done regional runs mm-hmm. of like three months, four months. Um, and I've done some of the worst theater of my life as well. Uh-huh. But this is, <laughs> this is it. This is what I've dreamed of. This was the goal. This was yep. everything that I wanted, I hoped, and I dreamed of. I was that person watching the Tonys every season. Uh-huh. And then <laughs> I was the person watching PBS specials. I still watch PBS specials. Yeah, cool. Just watched, watched Falsettos last night or a couple nights ago. Mm-hmm. Um, but now you're here and you never, no one truly ever knows, down to the exactly. producers, no one ever truly knows what it's like to be a Broadway performer until they have to do it themselves. Totally. Because they expect, they everyone sees, oh my God, you just sing and dance on stage. And I'm just like, say it again, I dare you. <laughs> right, 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 right. I honestly dare you to say that I just sing. Just. I just I sing you. and dance. Compared to, yes, filming a TV, a TV musical show or even being in the recording studio, nothing compares. No, I mean, nothing. I mean, Glee was pretty damn close, but you nothing compa- of... But that was switching it up all the time. Uh-huh. This is being able to maintain the same thing mm-hmm. for a long time, for yeah. six months to a year. Totally. Um, on Glee, it was just like, you go to the studio now, sing your heart is out. Okay, great. Mm-hmm. Now just act. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chords were fresh and as a daisy. Chords were always fresh as a daisy. Now I'm just like scrounging for <laughs> them to touch because I'm singing my song. It's like I can go into the studio and sing Mom will provide all day if you need me to do it. But then right. I have a full week of just not yeah. singing it. But this is, mm. I have to sing it all day mm-hmm. and night. And, and in a heavy costume. And, and uh, 15 extra pounds on my body mm-hmm. in the sand. Yeah. Yeah. Out of all these like guests that you're meeting, all these celebs that you met, even before the show, did anyone give you advice about specifically performing on Broadway? I mean, everyone says, all the performers always say, just rest. Don't underestimate. Just uh rest and don't underestimate the rest that you'll need. Because they all get it and they understand what it's like to just keep going, going, going. But like you said, you it 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 has to be it has to be learned on the job almost. It does. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because at the end of the day, my body doesn't physically always hurt. I'm not kicking my face eight shows a week. Right. I'm not twirling in the sand. <laughs> I'm not dancing that hard. I'm It's just this part of your it's body. The, my cords and my yeah. sanity of <laughs> walking and my feet and my ankles because I'm just running around in well, the, the sand. sand is tough, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't envy anyone that's like, oh I love running on the beach and I'm just like, oh that's a you? workout. Also everyone's just like, oh my God, I can't wait to leave here to go to a beach and I'm just like, I'm on a beach. <laughs> yeah. In your case I'm like, I don't want to see I want to see fake grass at this juncture. <laughs> Totally. There's a lot of beachy musicals on Broadway. This, this everything's a beach. Um, Everything has Sponge fake Bob sand. And Margaritaville. And yeah, yeah, it's interesting. That's a lot trend. I think maybe audiences, maybe with this freaking long winter, we're all like craving. A you mean the beach fall? Day. We skipped over summer and spring. We're back to fall. It's going to be cold for the rest of the year. Don't even say that. Well, no, it's going to happen because I literally walked outside and I was just like, oh, great. grits, so it's grits. So it's forty degrees outside. Grits. I'm from Hawaii, and so I, I can't. I you can't, can't even fathom it. I can't deal. No, I don't doubt I it. I deal. Um, talk to me about your music. Ooh. First of all, is it? Have you been doing any anything recently? And I assume with the show, with the musical. Well, with the, with the musical, I haven't been able to do as much because my one day off is Thursday, and I'd like to keep okay. myself in a dark place. Um, yeah. But I just recorded a new song. I just went back for the first time to the studio to record a new song because I was just like, I haven't done this in a long time. Can I still do it? A new song you wrote? I don't write. I'm not a writer. But you have songs that are attributed to just you. Yeah. Okay. I don't write anything. Okay. I'm like Whitney Houston. We Way don't have time it. for that. Way to own it. We don't have time for that. <laughs> we'll, we will sing your song house down, yeah. me and Whitney. <laughs> but like, we don't pen to paper. We, I don't think, I also don't have the mental, I don't, as much life experience that I've had right now, I don't have the yeah. life experience to, to be like, let me just write this one down yeah, 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 to see yeah. what my feelings are. Because totally. if I could, deal with my feelings in a healthy way I wouldn't need a therapist there you go there you go but no I love my music's great I mean I signed right 
during Glee. Ugh, I know. Um, I literally Incredible. was signing my series regular deal on, deal on Glee and signing a record label contract at the same time. And I was just like... At the exact same time? Yes. I was like, I'm 21. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing in life. Um, but you knew enough to know that you didn't know what you were doing. Oh, I still don't know what I'm doing. See... To this day... That's awesome. It's always... It's like an... It's... Everything. If you came in here and you were like, I know exactly what I'm doing. This is my next step. You could I'm going to take out over the, the window world. directly and I would <laughs> gladly fall 10 stories down. <laughs> no one knows what they're doing. If exactly. anyone says they know what they're doing, they're crazy. Then they really, really don't. They're awful humans at the same time. Totally. Um, because what a way to gloat. Um, but no, I was doing... Music was just like, hey, you want to sing? And I was just like, yeah, sure. Why not? Yeah, you love it. Yeah. I'm great at singing. But can I sing sure. hi? Yeah, sing hi. <laughs> great. Yeah, And I love it. And it's just kind of this thing that I do at the same time. But when Broadway called, I was just like, I need to focus on this right now. Sure. Because you can't be great at two separate things at the same time. It just doesn't work that way. Sure. Well, I was going to ask, like, w do you consider yourself first and foremost a singer or a musician? Or do you want to be like a Broadway actor? Or do you want to be at all? I don't know. I'd rather just be at all. I yeah. want to like... I want to do it all. I mm -hmm. can be capable of doing it all one day. Yeah. Um, yeah. Why not? Why not? Why not try? And if I fail, there's always going back to just one of them. Exactly. Yeah. If you overextend yourself, you could just scale back a little scale bit. Scale back. Just pull back. <laughs> what are your, um, what are the inspirations and the influences who you, who you see? Oh, that person has it all. I could just follow in that person's steps. Oh my God. And who wouldn't want to be Beyonce? Yeah. I mean, who wouldn't? I mean, it's either Beyonce or Michelle Obama. Whenever we air this episode, it doesn't matter because Beyonce's always going to be like... She's always going to be at the top. At the top. Yeah. Yeah. And having a moment. Yeah, yeah. She, apparently she has to have a moment like all the freaking time. And well, listen, she's always going to have a moment. Um, even the stands of her fingernails changing, her nail yes! polish changing. Which someone sat down at their desk all day to try to figure that out at BuzzFeed. And I was just like, <laughs> you just grabs. nailed it. Yeah, totally. You nailed it. You were just like, And well, she knows that that's what people are going to do. Of course. Yeah. That's she's, the level she's of like, fandom. Smart. She's yeah. very smart. She yeah. understands what she's doing. Yep. And she has done it all. She's done the acting. She's done the singing. She's done the... Yeah. She can do a she concert She hasn't like done no Broadway else. yet. That's true. But I mean, all she has to do is write a check, and I'd gladly do the musical for her. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, I'll do the musical. I'll be Beyonce in the musical. <laughs> oh, you should play Beyonce in the musical. I'm going to have to I just to saw the Donna Summer musical, which is similar. <laughs> right. Um, you saw the Donna Summer musical. The Donna Summer musical, and then the Cher musical is coming. There's a lot yes. of like biopics of female musicians coming. But like, I'm really here for the Cher one, mainly for Stephanie. Ugh. Same. So, um, Same. Stephanie, know that I love you. Yes, um, I assume she's listening. I know Big she's listening. Big fan of backstage. Yeah. I'm be like, hey, girl, listen, because I chatted you out, She's incredible. Yeah, she's so incredible. She, her voice. And is, you just saw falsettos. Yeah. Yeah. And I was just like, I'm here for all of your she's, great live. That's, I'm still reeling from that, that show. Same. That performance. Um, you're amazing. What, in our last five-ish minutes, um, I want to ask you about your acting advice, of course. Yes. You've covered a lot of it in terms of how to survive on Broadway, we've covered. But um, thinking back to this Alex who was submitting the video on MySpace and who had, had the, what, the big dreams, but not... Goals and aspirations The goals and aspirations. But did you... I love this idea that you're signing both of these huge life-changing things at the same time. Like, how do you keep it in perspective? And how do you look back on that pre-all-of-this-Alex... Well, my mother raised me in a way that no matter what you get, it can be taken away immediately. Mm. And so I think that's really what everything is in my mind. And I've worked extremely hard for a lot of it. And a lot of that work has had a lot of things, quote unquote, fall into place or fall into my lap. Mm. But at the same time, it's you, everyone loves to see the success of it all, but don't doesn't see the, re ooh, I can't speak, the rejection of it all. Oh, absolutely. They never really see the no's that happened or mm -hmm. just anything bad that could have happened. They all, we only positive, th sorry, we only see positive things. Sure. And so with all the negatives, it's for every one positive that I've gotten, my mother's just like, and it could go away and you'll probably hear nine no's tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it would happen. And yeah. so I would hold the yeses up to something reveled. And yeah. when the yeses kept coming and the no's stopped, it was like, wow, let me just keep doing what I'm doing and work mm -hmm. harder to achieve even more. And and continue to remember that that's not normal. It's not normal. <laughs> and I know that I'm abnormal. Sure, sure, sure. 
And so... So it's about gratitude. It is. It's always about gratitude. Yeah. And at the same time, even being, quote unquote, the best at what I do, I'm a male that can sing a soprano line mm-hmm. like no other, but knowing that there will always be someone better behind me coming up. Mm. And rather than slap that person in the face and know me Watts, not know me Watts, know me Malone them down some stairs, <laughs> showgirls them, um, uh, nurture them and teach them. Because cool. at the end of the day, like, yeah, baby, I'm retire soon. And you're going to have to do <laughs> what I do. Soon. No, honey, I'm gone soon. I'm no, out. No, no, no. Um, I'm going to go. And so someone has to be there. It's all about like planting seeds and making legacies and like Mm -hmm. nurturing because that's what my mentors did to me. So it's just like for everything I get, I give as well. Right. Because to turn around and to to give that slap is it's about your ego. And that's not that's not a healthy thing. And it's not a way to leave a legacy. It's not a way to preserve your. I don't know, your reputation even. Absolutely not. But also it's just it feeds you to to help others for sure. That's excellent advice. What do you do to like, do you actively practice gratitude? Is that like uh, a... Oh, I'm not humble. What are you saying? <laughs> <laughs> no. But um... you are. I like your brand of of like confidence and humility. It's somehow both at the same time. Um, I always feel that there are not enough people in life that sit in their own truth. And so my mm. biggest thing is you have to sit in your own truth and then... People come, people go, people fall, people move. Um, Mm -hmm. But once you understand the balance of not letting people take advantage of you, but still giving enough to people at the same time, Mm -hmm. you can literally just straddle the line of life because it's the honesty of yourself and then knowing that you can't give yourself to everyone at the same time. You just have to know. Like for me, it's I know that I can only give myself so much until I am hurt because I know that I'm not getting anything back in return. Mm -hmm. And so... You got to know that. I do. And being that I became, quote unquote, famous at 18, Mm -hmm. I would walk to the mall and people like, oh my God! And I'd be like, hey, sup? Yeah. Arm length away. Yeah. And I realized that I would get this reputation of, oh my God, that's a bitch. And I was just like, well, maybe I shouldn't just be like, stop, halt. Um, Mm -hmm. And I'd give them a side of me that seemed welcoming and inviting and the the side that is welcoming. But they, I gave them out the Alex Newell rather than Alex. Oh, cool, cool, cool. You just have to know when to turn it on and to turn it off and Mm. still find a balance where you're genuine about it because you can, everyone go, oh my God, thank you so much. (laughs) In that voice. In that voice, exactly. Then just thank you, thank you, honestly, thank you. Yes, we can take a picture. I'm going to go eat after this picture, but like know that I'm going to stop my time. Here's my boundaries. Hey, great, goodbye. Totally. Like the Alex Newell, it's not being fake. No. It's about being. I, I like that kind of a, deg- a degree of yourself. A degree of yourself because yeah. you can't give yourself to everyone. It's like no. you're just giving yourself away for free to people and yeah. the little part of your soul just dies because you're out here just giving, 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 That's giving. That's what fame is. But Exactly. And then you lose yourself yeah. with all the people that you've given yourself mm-hmm. to. You've literally just ripped a piece of skin off and been like, here, take it. Go forth, prosper. Well, I think most people take years to figure out what you've just articulated, the balance of, of like being famous and being kind and giving and polite to people, but also being able to have boundaries and take care of yeah. yourself. Because some people take a long time swinging back and forth between the two extremes rather than establishing like, these are my boundaries. Exactly. I'm respectful. Be respectful of me. I love you to an extent. It's that it's like that's almost your message. Exactly. Yeah. And then the humility is just like I know that one day I'm gonna be a washed up has been and I'm just trying to <laughs> When be is nice this day? Ever... Why do you see this day? I don't see oh this day at God, all. Oh my god, I see it coming. <laughs> if I keep reminding myself that it's coming, I work harder. There you go. So I'm just like, mm. it's coming. I'm gonna be a has been. Right. I'm gonna be a one hit wonder. And that's the thing about the people coming behind you too, is that pushes you too, right? Yeah. yeah those little children you want to improve yourself like my child that's doing pearl and um spongebob the musical <gasps> oh that's my, God. my child who is she? jaylen christie jose that's my child Do you know her yes that's when i say that's my child that's my actual child she like opened her mouth and, and jesus the sound that came out. out i was like what yeah um We've i met never her, heard that before i met her when i was teaching at Broadway Dreams, this thing that I do over the summer, like maybe four years ago. Oh. She's spectacular. She's always been spectacular. She was 16 when she was spectacular. And I was just like, wow, that's a sound. You remind me so much of a 
past version of myself. I mm. don't know why. <laughs> You've huh. done Broadway Dreams multiple times? Yeah. Do you love it? I do. Yeah. It's a, That's so cool. It's a great part to like give back. Yeah. Excuse me. Um, it's Not just for the sake of giving back. Like You get a lot out of it, I'm sure. You do. I mean, you meet new people. You see new people. How I was literally doing Broadway Dreams when my agent says, hey, Michael Arden wants to have a sit-down meeting with you. And I was just like... Cool, great. I'm at the Wall of Sandenberg. She was like, he's at the Wall of Sandenberg. And I was just like, uh, I'm here currently at this very juncture. And she was like, he's there currently at this very juncture. And I was just like, that's weird. great. Send him my number. We'll just have, go get coffee or sit in the theater. And that's exactly what we did. Huh. And because of Broadway Dreams, I was there. I mean, I was living in LA at the same time, but the, I was at broad, okay. teaching at Broadway Dreams at that time. Um, but yeah, it's great. You get to see and meet so many wow. wonderfully talented guys kids and adults and yeah. co fresh college kids at that um would you not have gotten the asaka if you hadn't met him in that in those circumstances i don't know maybe okay i have no idea i did look him in the face and say the only role that i want to play is asaka but is that right yeah because you had already played another role and you were like yeah, i played pop again I, I was just like this yeah. is the gayest role i've ever played in my life <laughs> <laughs> so what is it about you playing these these female can i ask you about your LGBT, I don't know what to call it. Is it is it your activism? Is is by playing female characters, by playing a trans character, is this, do you consider it to be, I'm on the front lines of LGBT representation? I mean, it's always it always goes back to, and I get flack for it sometimes, but just like, it's the actor playing the role. Um, mm -hmm. It's... You get flack for playing a trans character? I or? get flack for saying that. It's the actor playing the role because we're like, oh. well, then they could find the person. I'm like, I understand that. I get that. It's mm -hmm. it's all plain and simple. I do understand that. But like the capability of myself, me speaking personally, is mm -hmm. I can only do so much. Mm -hmm. I am not this macho, macho man that can go out here and be the lead tenor um, <laughs> th role on the Broadway. I know that about myself. Sure. Honey, I'm the sassy black girl. I will <laughs> scream and I'm telling you, stealing the show <laughs> the random black girl out here coming out the ensemble singing the one number then leaving um like that's my gig and i know that i'm great You're... at it i can't do if i loved you i can't do that uh -huh, uh -huh. i'm not that i'm not a raul i'm not a You're phantom jennifer holiday. i am jennifer holiday i'm jennifer holiday billy with, porter i'm billy porter yeah, yeah. I, I, it's it's that yeah. it's not me saying and that's because pff, i'm dying it's because Ugh. It's me saying that's what I offer. That's what I can do. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I am the best person for the role. Mm -hmm. And we have to come back to that. And sometimes when it comes to theater, the person that you're seeing could in that director's mind have been the best person for that yes. role. Mm -hmm. It's just like the bobshell on Smash between uh -huh. Ivy and <laughs> Catherine McPhee. Um, Megan yes. Hilton and Catherine McPhee. Um, Karen. <laughs> Karen and is. Ivy found it. I couldn't. I couldn't help you in that. I'm moment. really great at it. Yeah, yeah. It's like one director really saw Megan Hilty as Marilyn Monroe. Totally. The other director saw there you go. Catherine McPhee as yeah, Marilyn Monroe. As the Ro best person. As the best the person in the role. Yeah. And that's what theater is, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to gender as well. I mean, okay. when you go back to Shakespeare, only people allowed to be in theater mm -hmm. were men. Yep. And so that man at the time was the best role to play that woman. Mm -hmm. And so. I think we need to go back to theater being expression and rather it being so cookie cutter and black and mm -hmm. white and you need to, because once we start to try to make everyone happy, yeah. that's all we're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're literally not making art, we're making everyone happy and art is set there to challenge everyone, not mm -hmm. make them happy. Mm -hmm. You got to cast the best person yeah. for the role, whoever that may be. And sometimes it's wrong. I, I uh -huh. will say, sometimes, baby, sometimes that doesn't work. it don't work <laughs> and it's wrong. Sure. But, we learn from our mistakes and mm -hmm. we challenge people and we create the conversation again mm. because that's another part of art creating conversation. Gorgeous. Wonderful. Well, I think that you are the greatest person to play Asaka in Thank this production you. of Once on the Island. Stop it. You're too kind. And congratulations on all your successes and keep breaking legs. I'm going to try. I'm going to reach out for an audience member to see if I can break their leg. In the Envelope is recorded at Lotus Productions and Hyperbolic Audio in New York City. 
Thanks, as always, to producer, editor, and all-around podcast whiz, Jamie Muffet. You can follow him on Twitter at JamieMusicNYC. You can follow me, Jack Smart, on Twitter at JackSmartWrites. Thank you to the team at Backstage, a.k.a. the most trusted name in casting, Peter Rappaport, Mark Stinson, Francis Ramos, Rowan al Katib, Caitlin Watkins, Lauren Rout, and especially Tony nominee of my heart, Casey Howe. For more awards and industry coverage, head over to Backstage.com. Thank you for listening. Tune in next time for another glimpse in the envelope.